traders, this is Cousin Benny coming to you from theclosingprint.com on October the 9th, 2016. In this edition of your weekend video newsletter, we'll cover the indices all closed a bit lower last week. Tick and tick Q, institutional sentiment is still bullish, especially on the New York Stock Exchange composite. And the NASDAQ is moving sideways. NICE and NASI, the summation is lower on both of those indexes, so there's a bit of bearish breath. But the NYHL continues to be bullish since March. It's at 81.21. It did turn last week, but we do see up down volume is mixed, so there's really no signal with breath. It's just steady as she goes. CPC is in the green zone, so that's an interesting caveat. It's a bullish signal. It's at 1.18, and typically when we see that, the indices actually move higher. VIX is declining somewhat. It's at 13.49, and that can be perceived as bearish. US dollar had a really strong week. It closed at 96.65, and that's bearish for equities. The British pound is at a 31-year low. With a low currency, obviously that short term is good for the economy, for the Brits. So we'll see how that plays out. Bonds, TLT is lower, short-term yields drifted higher. AGG is lower and the bond stock ratio is flat to slightly lower. There's no signal there. Crude was bullish. We're plus 3.25 percent on the week. And copper faded with gold moving lower, headed for the 1200 range with CRB index sideways. Sectors, we still have the XLP, XLY ratio moving lower, which is bullish for equities. Semiconductors were bullish, certain pockets of sectors and industry groups were bullish, so we need to keep an eye on those. Interest sensitive stocks obviously were lower. And the heat map is starting to reverse. It went from red to yellow to green, and now we're back to yellow with only a few pockets of strength showing there. Could be just rotation, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Fed rates are still supportive, no rate hike affecting yields and bonds. They do have more of a hawkish tone to their conversations lately, but it makes no sense because the economy really isn't making headway. The non-farm payrolls report actually pushed unemployment rate back up to 5%, so what the Fed is saying right now doesn't make any sense. Bottom line, it's more bullish than bearish. The generals are still okay, and until those break down, as I pointed out in a weekend blog post, we can't expect the indices to falter. Just more of the same sideways action. Earnings season is upon us, and banks start reporting in the short term. We'll look at the IBD 50 for setups, and of course, Bukowski has 4 or 5 green with his CPI signal mixed since Friday, October 7th. Okay, so let's start off with the spiders. This is the daily chart. We've had this trend line support since February, the Brexit lows, and then again this past week we touched that level twice and rebounded. We do have these lower highs for the most part, so we're inside of this larger triangle pattern. Prices did come down to this 236 level numerous times, so that is important. To remember 214 is a level where a lot of buying stepped in at these wicks. Okay, so we take out the 214 level, more than likely we'll come down and test this 211.24. But for that to happen, we need to see banks really falter in a bad way when they start reporting. With regard to stochastic, that is moving lower. It is at the 50 level, so it could move in either direction. MACD reflects the lack of momentum that's moving sideways along with RSI. Shifting gears, we're looking at the S&P 500 here. We reflect on the fact that moving averages have started to move sideways like they did back here in April and May. But the real focus of this chart is the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline down below. The signal which is derived from a five period moving average and the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline is actually invisible in this version. What this shows you is a five day delay and typically when 
this indicator moves down into the green zone, we see inflection points and prices move higher, like we had back here in the Brexit lows. This dip here led to a move higher, and this dip at Brexit led to a move higher as well. So when we hit these lows down in the green zone, minus 500, minus 600, we start to look for inflection points like we had in April and May, where price action bounced and then price action bounced again. So just something to reflect on with regard to the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline. And the last thing we'll look at is the Wilshire 5000 composite, obviously 5000 stocks, a broader measure of the markets. This is the monthly chart. Note the moving averages, the 50 period, and the 200 are still moving higher. For the most part, this looks pretty strong. The price action still remains relatively bullish. RSI drifting higher from the 50 level. As we saw previously, we could still be headed in that direction. All depends on earnings over the next few weeks. Also in the semiconductor group down here at the bottom, which remains strong, but generally speaking most of the sectors looked a little bit weak. So with the weakness you could lean more bearish. We'll just have to watch what these sectors do during the next couple of weeks of earnings season. Be mindful of the XLP, XLY ratio. This is easier to watch whole sectors from a bullish or bearish perspective. If the ratio moves lower, that's generally bullish for equities. When it moves higher, that's generally considered bearish for equities. We can see a little inflection on Friday last week. We'll keep an eye on this on the weeks ahead. So if we're thinking bearish or bullish, we want to consider the generals in particular, as we pointed out in a weekend blog post. Apple continues to show higher lows and higher highs, with the exception of following through this week. We do have this higher high in September. Moving averages continue to incline. So there's nothing here that makes us think that a bearish move in the indices is imminent. We'll have to watch for these stocks to break down. The same goes for the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Facebook here, sideways action, but generally speaking, the moving averages are headed higher. And we have earnings in the short term. Amazon, same thing. This is a quintessential discretionary stock, watching the XLP, XLY ratio. This stock moving higher does bode well for bullish equities. There's no reason to think that we're going to break down and the indices will be dragged down with it. Look for your generals to break first. Netflix also, very bullish action, moving higher through the 200 period moving average, which isn't shown here, but it is shown in the weekend blog post. Note the flag. Price action is more, like, more than likely going to test the 111.85 level in the short term. SOTMA is bullish. Google, the last stock in this group. Note the sideways action. The longer the base, the higher in space. This could break higher, could break lower. We'll have to look for direction, but for the most part, Google looks pretty good and doesn't give us any cause for concern in the short term. Pleasant surprise on Friday, got an upgrade. Stock bolted higher. RSI is now embedded. And we had huge volume short covering more than likely into Friday's price action. Beautiful move on the gap stores last week. Sometimes you get lucky. Okay, so that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from the closing print on October 7, 2016. We will send out a watch list later tonight and a blog post more than likely before the opening bell with the charts that we're looking at with the fondest of affections. Take care. Hope you had a good weekend and we will talk to you soon.